My name is Kevin Adikurnia. I'm a master's student in Chungyan Christian University under the guidance of Professor Chung Dar Xiao. Today, I will be presenting my uh, Tetrahyman Accounting Methods SOP and the paper titled Performance Comparison of Five Methods for Tetrahyman and Number Counting in MSJ Platform. First, the motivation of this study is that counting organism number is primarily used in applied ecology and it is difficult due to the fact that they are movement or overlapping. These movements are the natural movement of the animal or overlapping between animals that will make the counting of the animals have some problem, whether it's animal or microorganism. And therefore, we tested several methods which might help uh, with segmentation for better counting results. And the methods we tested are divided into MSJ and machine learning based method. So there will be uh, two groups of the methods that we tested in this study. And the study will also show the most suitable method to count total population of microorganisms to produce potential biases, mainly in Tetrahymena. And this is our experimental overview. First, we do an image capture that was done using phase contrast microscopy technique and are recorded using the high resolution CCD. So we will use our microscope, <coughs> which uh, we will do a uh, phase contrast microscopy with. And we also record it using the high resolution CCD. And we will capture the images of tetrahymena. And we will do the segmentation and counting of the cells in MSJ platform using five different methods. Uh, the five different methods are the PAM, Particle Analyzer method, Fine Maximum method or FMM, Trainable Weka Segmentation or TWS, Watershed Segmentation method or WSM, Stardust method or SDM. And we will compare it to the manual counting result uh, using the QPath, which I will present in the next slides. And we will do a counting performance comparison and statistical analysis. These are the four main applications that are <clears throat> necessary for uh, processing the data that we used. First is the virtual dub 2 which can be uh, downloaded in the link, and then the MSJ. Uh, virtual dub 2 is used to convert the video from the MOV or MP4 to AVI, so it can be processed by an MSJ. And we use the MSJ VGBuild because it has a wide variety of tools that are already installed so we don't need to install uh, other tools except if it is necessary and the next one is the QPath uh, 0.2.3 we use this to annotate these cells because it's easier to annotate it uh, using QPath rather than VG and it can also be used to uh, annotate for images for training in the star disk and then the final one is the anaconda. So for the anaconda, it's just for uh, studies training. And this is the outline of this presentation. So first, we will do video conversion using virtual up 2 and then we will do manual counting and studies method training that set how to make the data set for the training. Then we will go to the image based method, which are the fine maxima method, uh, particle analyzer method, watershed method, and I will also uh, show the macro, which will compile all the image based method into one. So if you need to do the image based method, you can just use the macro and it will output the data into several excels and you can already use it for the statistical analysis. Next, there will also be the trainable weka segmentation, TWS and the Stardust method. First, uh, we will do the video conversion using virtual dub 2. So uh, to reduce the workload, we will do a batch conversion of the videos that are done using virtual dub 2. To do it, uh, we can open the file, QBest operation, and batch wizard. And it will open a batch wizard window, and we can select the where you want to save the file. For This is our uh, example. So we'll use it in a user's username, in the desktop, and the folder. It depends on what you use. And we just need to drag the videos that you have to the uh, windows window here the empty window it uh, it already has the source file because we already dragged it and we click add to queue and resave in the format avi and then if uh, you already move all the videos that you want to convert and or you already make sure the output location you can just click ok 
Then we can start the conversion using the file job control or by pressing F4. So you can uh, navigate to file, job control or by clicking F4. And then it will open a new window, the virtual dub to job control. <coughs> and you can just click on start to start the conversion process from uh, what your file is, either MOV, MP4 or other files to AVI. First, we will do the most common method uh, and maybe the golden standard for cell counting, which is manual counting. And we will do the manual counting using the QPath version 0.2.3. So in QPath, there are selection uh, tools that are available. So from left to right, there are rectangle, ellipse, line, polygon, polyline, brush, magic wand, and points. But uh, for the annotation that we use, the most important one is the brush because it is the easiest tool to use and the most convenient one. So for using the brush tool, after you select the brush tool, uh, the size of the brush tool depends on the zoom of the object. So it's quite different from other uh, like other softwares that you can set the size of the uh, tools, but here you can set it by only using the zoom. If you zoom in, then you can select a smaller area, but if you zoom out, then it will select a bigger area. To increase the size of the selected area, so just drag the mouse because first you select a small area and you can just drag the mouse while left while holding the left click and it will increase the area. But if you need to erase, if you select uh, too much area, you can erase it, hold Alt and left click and drag the mouse to tidy the area here like this. And afterward, we can choose what is the object classified as in the annotation step. We will have the object list here and the class list. And to annotate it, just select the object and choose the class and click the set class. Here uh, is the example to add a new class. So uh, to add a new class, you can just right click anywhere on the uh, class list and select add or remove add class and there will be a pop-up window which will say that uh, for add class <clears throat> and you can write the class name that you want and then click OK. So this is the result example for the annotation result in Tetrahymena. There will be an uh, outline that will cover the Tetrahymena that you already selected. So if there are Tetrahymenas like or cells that you haven't selected yet, you can go Go back to it uh, later after you finish uh, annotating like most of the cells. And uh, to use the annotation result as a mess for training in Stardust, you can open the GitHub page of the Stardust in the annotating with QPath 2D. You, you will have uh, the steps uh, for annotation. And they will also give you this the script, which you can download just by right clicking on the link and uh, click on save. And then you, you just follow the instructions uh, provided by the developer of Stardust. The first set of methods that we will use is a machine based method. And it has three methods which can be used and built only from tools available in MSG. So you don't need uh, plugins or programs from other tools uh, to do this. So it is divided into three methods. The find maximum method, particle analyzer method, and watershed method. And before extracting the data, we will do pre-processing to reduce the error during data extraction. So this is the image pre-processing. First, we do enhance contrast to make the images have the same color or contrast using the enhance contrast tool. This is the enhance contrast. You can tick the equalize histogram box and process all 10 slices box. And uh, here is the example for original image. Here, there will be some different colors, but after uh, enhance contrast, the color will not be significantly different. Next, uh, for the image preprocessing, we will do a thresholding using the image adjust threshold and particle analysis using analyze and less particles to make the mass of the images. And the mass will exclude different objects 
which might get detected as false positives in certain cases. After we do the threshold, we open the analyze particles and don't forget to show mask to make the mask. So here, if you see, uh, there are small objects that uh, are contained in the background, which are foreign objects. We don't want to be counted in our uh, result. So uh, using this uh, step, after a step, the small uh, foreign objects will be uh, excluded from the image. Use the find maxima method. We use the find maxima tool located in process and find maxima, uh, which are available in MSJ. So we use the uh, mask and then we navigate to the process and find maxima and it will open the new window like this one here. And we set the prominence to 80 and the less is uh, less value is okay because the image is in binary. So there are no like difference between uh, between the contrast and because the background is dark because we inverted it from the previous image and just untick light background and the output type is the point selection and preview point selection and here we it will show 145 maxima which is the same as the number of cells that is detected using this method but uh, this method has limited endpoint as it only calculate based on the maxima from the image so it doesn't calculate the area of the cells that are being detected here next is the particle analyzer method for this method we just rerun the threshold and analyze particle step after the pre-processing they will extract all the count of the cells additionally it will also get the total area of all the cells so it's the total area of all the cells that are marked here and we also get the average size of these cells so from this image it has the uh, 145 the same as the fine maxima for the count but it has total area of uh, 181,482 pixels and the average size of the cells are 1251.6 pixels the final method for the uh, image gear based method is the watershed method uh, for this method we will apply a watershed algorithm which are available in msg from the process binary and watershed after you click the watershed it will automatically apply the, the algorithm and you cannot set uh, any parameters this algorithm will split overlapping cells in order to count more accurately. So like several cells, like if they are being overlapping, sometimes they will count be count as one by using the two previous methods. But by applying the watershed algorithm, it will be uh, split and be, can be counted as two cells. So here we see the count is around 156. The total area is uh, relatively smaller, around 181,000. 217 pixel but the average size is around 1161.647 pixels then to encompass all the uh, image gear based method from fine maxima method particle analyzer method and watershed method we provided a macro to simultaneously create and save the result of all three image gear based method as several excel files this is the macro that we provided for the image JBS method, which encompasses all the method. Parameters in red can be edited according to the necessity. It depends on the size of the cells for the analyzed particles right here and here. And the strings in blue can be edited according to the safe path preference. Uh, for our preference, we saved it in the desktop and the name of the file is the particle analyzer result for the PAM. And next. Uh, we also saved it as fine maximum result for the FMM and watershed result as the uh, watershed. Here we set the prominence to 50. There will be no difference between the prominence 80 to 50 as long as the image is binary. But if you use unprocessed image, because we do pre-processing, if you don't do the pre-processing, then the prominence will have effect. Next, I will start to tell you about the 
machine learning based method. First is the trainable Webcast Documentation or TWS. This is a plugin created by Arganda Carrera and Co. It combines a collection of machine learning algorithms with a set of selected image features to produce pixel based segmentations. In the VG build of ImageJ, trainable Weka segmentation comes pre installed, which can be accessed through the plugin step. And this is the workflow for the trainable Weka segmentation uh, provided by the developer Arganda Carreras et al. This is the GUI, the interface for the trainable Weka segmentation. On the left, we have the training and the options, and on the right, we have the labels. First, I will tell you uh, the training and the options. So here we have the train classifier. It's to train the uh, machine learning, the AI, and for the toggle overlay, create result, get probability, and plot, plot result. It will create result windows based on the labels. And here we have the options. We can apply, load, save uh, the classifier, or load the data uh, that we have previously done. And we can load the classifier to use the previous classifier that we train for our current image or save the classifier that we train for future image and uh, apply classifier to apply the classifier we already load to our current image. Here is the trainable Weka segmentation settings. So these are the training features that are available in base build of the trainable Weka segmentation. You can see that there are lots of training features that are available here. And these are the training features that we use uh, in the study. Gaussian blur, Sobel filter, difference of Gaussians, membrane projections, variance, mean, maximum, median, anisotropic diffusion, Quahara, and Laplacian. And we, we didn't change the value for membrane thickness, patch size, minimum sigma, and maximum sigma. And now to train the AI, after we select the area, for each uh, object that we have. Like for this one, we have the tetrahymena and the background. We just select the area of the tetrahymena and add it to the labels here. And for the background, we also do that. Select the background and add to the background. Here, there are several uh, foreign objects. So we also add it to the background. So the, the AI can recognize which are the tetrahymena and which are the background. And after we add the uh, object and add them to the group that they belong to, we can train the classifier by clicking train classifier. After we train it, then each uh, defined object in the image are marked according to their color. So here we see that these cells are being marked with red, uh, the same as their labels, and the background is uh, green, same th with their label. Uh, and we also see that the foreign objects are also marked with mostly green, not red. So because we have two classes or two labels here, we have two labels, the tetrahyman and the background, the result will be two different layer, which are the tetrahymena and the background. So if we have more layers, then it will be, it will divide it to more result layer. There will be, if you have three results, then it will be three or more. And for the calculation, we can use the tetrahymena layer and we can count it using the particle uh, analyzed particles, the same as the particle analyzer method previously. To make it easier to count, you can use the macro provided here uh, to count the tetrahymena and save it to Excel file. It's the same command that are used in the particle analyzer method, but uh, it's only the fraction of the command which can be used for the trainable Weka segmentation. The last method that I will cover is the Stardis method, which are also a machine learning method. The Stardis is an object detection tool mainly used for nucleus segmentation, and it uses star convex shapes to segment the nucleus. And we are trying to modify the Stardis to use for segmenting tetrahymena for counting in this study. Additionally, it is also a Python based tool, so it is a little harder to use compared to the other method that I covered previously. But the developer and creator of Stardis uh, created a very detailed tutorial for running Stardis and training the model until you run the Stardis in the MSJ and obtaining the data. So uh, it is quite easy to understand.
and it will help you very much if you access their tutorial. First, uh, we do image annotation using QPath to create a training model for the Triamina dataset because previously it has not been used for the Triamina dataset, so we need to train our own model. We do it using QPath as I mentioned previously, and it can an annotate the objects and it will convert it to mass for training. These are the necessary tools uh, or dependencies uh, for Stardust. So previously I said that we need to download Anaconda. You can download it in this link and the dependencies in Anaconda. And we have the dependencies here from Python, uh, Python, pip, TransferFlow, SciPy, NumPy, Matplotlib, Glob, JupyterLab, TQDM, TIFF file, CSPDIP, and Stardust. These are all the dependencies necessary for Stardust. And it can be installed in your conda by uh, copying the command that we provided here. And please just follow the version that we already provided for the Python and TensorFlow. If you use a newer TensorFlow or Python, it can uh, make a problem with the training uh, process. And next, we also need to install the starters in MSJ using the plugins. Uh, you can access the tutorial how to install the starters here and their MSJ page. Now to train the starters model for the time and accounting, we use a Jupyter Notebook, which are provided by Schmidt et al., uh, the developer of Stardust, and it can be accessed from their GitHub page or the link that we provide here. The steps are defined by the developer in the Jupyter Lab, and we just need to copy and paste the script to our own Jupyter Lab and run the script. Uh, there are several strings that need to be changed according to file location that we have, and several other parameters. But it will, it was also mentioned by the uh, developer. Uh, for example, this is the graphical user interface of the Jupyter Lab, and we can we just copy it. Uh, copy the strings that are provided by the developer here in the empty box and click run and it will show another one and just copy it again and add your file path and run it run it and keep running according to their tutorial and their explanation afterwards uh, we need to uh, run this uh, command to export the TensorFlow model for use in MSJ VG build. To apply the Stardust model to our image, first we need to change the image to grayscale using image type 8 bit and it will change the image to grayscale. And after you install Stardust, open it using the plugins Stardust, Stardust 2D. It will open a GUI of the Stardust. And first, you need to set the model to model.zip from file because you want to use your uh, train uh, model, not the model that are provided uh, by the Stardust, the developer of Stardust. And next, you, you set the probability slash score threshold and the overlap threshold according to the training result in the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the training result will show the probability slash probability slash score threshold and the overlap threshold and we only need to set uh, the value here next select the zip file from the trend that set which are usually saved at uh, c users username models stardust then we can click ok and it will process the image with the model previously trained here is the prediction result of stardust here is the original one and this is the prediction result or the segmented one so here we see that the stardust result can uh, distinguish overlapping cells for instance this one these three cells which overlaps it can distinguish it really well compared to the previous uh, methods that we used but uh, for Stardust, to obtain the data of the objects, we can access it through the ROI Manager, uh, More, ROI Manager, More, Multi-Measure, and untick all the box, and it will show the results. It will show the number of cells here. So this is cell number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
until the end of the cells that are detected. And this is the each area of the cells. Next, uh, this is the limitation of the star disk uh, in the result that it must be exported manually for each image. So you can only run it one by one. Compared to the other previous methods, you can run more than one, like maybe 10 images at once, and you get the result in the Excel file immediately. And the important data, as I mentioned previously, is the account here and the area, which show the area of each cells. And the data obtained in the results window can be copied to an Excel file to calculate the count of tetrahymena cells, average cell size, and total area. The cell count is done by counting how many cells or the max value of column A. So the column A, you will see that uh, the number of cells is equal to the cell count here. In this image, we get the tetrahymena count of 181. For the total area is 187 uh, and 896 pixels. Average cell size is 1038.099. 448 pixels and this is the results of our testing and from what we see the WSM and SDM has the highest sensitivity compared to the other methods uh, with 99.5 with the standard deviation of 2.3 percent for the WSM and 98.9 with standard deviation of 1.1 percent for the SDM However, uh, the additional testing using Pearson correlation and one-way ANOVA result showed uh, that SDA method has higher correlation to manual accounting method compared to WSM. Here we see that the Pearson correlation result showed SDM has 0.98 correlation to manual accounting, but the WSM only has the 0.91. Therefore, SDM is more suitable uh, if you compare the SDM to manual counting method, while the other method only has around 0.8 correlation to manual counting method. And the one way ANOVA result also showed that the WSM, SDM, and the manual counting method has no significant difference, but the other three methods, which are the TWS, PAM, and FMM, has significant difference. Additionally, the other parameters such as the average cell size and total area showed the high correlation between SDM and manual counting method. Here we see that in the average cell size, the SDM has the highest correlation, 0.66, to manual counting method, but the other methods only has 0.13 for WSM, 0.25 for uh, TWS, and 0.09 for the PIM. The FMM is not mentioned here because it can only count the cells and it cannot count the cell size. But uh, if we see on the one-way ANOVA, there are no significant difference between the manual counting, SDM, and WSM, but uh, there are significant difference to the TWS and PAM. In total error result, uh, SDM held the highest correlation to manual counting followed by the, the TWS. SDM has a correlation of 0.8, while the TWS has a correlation of 0.62. And the WSM and PAM has relatively lower correlation, which are 0.35 and 0.41 respectively. But in the one way ANOVA result, there are no significant difference between all the methods except for the SDM and TWS, which are significantly different. And unlike uh, the result in effort cell size. Uh, this result may be caused due to the number of cell count of the TWS, which are uh, relatively lower compared to the other methods. And these are the conclusion of the study. After we tested the five methods for cell detection, which are divided into two categories, MHJ-based and machine learning-based methods, it showed that the MSJ based method has better workflow compared to machine learning based methods due to its simplicity and its implementation in MSJ. But uh, the machine learning based method, which is SDM, has better results compared to all the methods that we have tested in the study.
and we are able to provide uh, five methods and their working procedure for tetrahamanesal counting and users can choose which methods to use according to their necessities and as we mentioned the best result that we recommend is by using Stardist. Thank you for listening to my presentation on this study.